it's Anne from the Uses Crafter. So I get a lot of questions every time I post my projects, how to, how to create an offset. So if you see the dream catcher as well as the name and then the little arrow pointing at the end, um, we have a double offset. We have the yellow layer and then as well as the blue layer. Now, in order to create it, I use um, Inkscape. In a lot of my Facebook groups, what I see is people saying, oh, well, don't use Inkscape, it's too hard, use Fonto. But I believe using Fonto, you can only create one layer of the offset. And you, I don't, I don't think that you can, um, uh, you can determine how thick the offset is or how thick or thin. So in Inkscape, you can do both. You can create as many layers as you want. And then two, you can also, um, you have total control over the thickness of your offset. And that's important because um, I feel like sometimes you want a more thin one for delicate things or maybe more formal things. And then you want a bigger offset for, I mean, it's just, it depends on what you're offsetting, but there's a look and feel to it. So it's important to learn Inkscape and I am totally there with you. Uh, it took me a long time to learn Inkscape, and when I say learn, I learned how to do an offset, and that's it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how the easiest way to do an offset, and it's the only thing that I do in Inkscape, um, so I'll show you that. But here's the problem with offsetting and in Inkscape. Fonts are not a big deal because we download fonts all the time, right? Like I go through Creative Fabrica, there's font bundles, there's Defont. So my fonts, I typically don't use the Cricut fonts, so it's not a big deal because I have it somewhere else that I can import it into Inkscape. The problem is if you're, if everything that you use is within a design space, like it's part of their image uh, collection or their font collection, you're not going to be able to create an offset in Inkscape because we can't take anything out of design space. I know that's a, that's a pain in the butt which is partially why I love having a membership elsewhere. Now granted, I'm an affiliate at Creative Fabrica, so I have access to their things. Um, but I think it's, I think it would be very beneficial um, to have a membership elsewhere. I like Creative Fabrica because all their fonts and images come with commercial usage. So see right here. So I stopped completely, um, keeping track of where I get my fonts and what comes with the fonts. Like, is this one for personal use or not? And all that good stuff. I just, I mean, they have so many fonts. But like I said, the thing is the images, I can create an offset for the images. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on this one. So this is, you know, a bunch of different candies. Um, so let's download it. So when you download, you're gonna get a folder. So I always go and I show in folder because to upload it into Inkscape, each one of these um, images has to be um, unzipped. So for instance, the candy, I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna move it to my desktop. So that's where I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna go into Inkscape. Um, let's do a new one. See, I just did hello offset. <laughs> the offset really does make your projects look a little bit more refined, like there's more finesse to it, it's easier to read, and it gives you the layers that you want. The, you know, the contrast in colors, the contrast in cardstock really makes it nice, like stand out, you know, like when you're mixing glitter cardstock with regular cardstock, you're missing a, uh, mixing a light color with a dark color, shimmer and not shimmer. Um, all of that you can do with the, with the different layers um, with the offsets. Okay, enough. <laughs> let's go to file, import. We're gonna import the candy, okay? So let's go and find candy. There it is, so I'm gonna double I'm just gonna click okay. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm telling you, I know just enough in Inkscape to offset these things. Okay, I'm gonna make it bigger so you can see it. Just like Design Space, I wanna lock it because I want it to be, I want it to grow proportionately wide and in height. So here it is. So 
this is selected right now, right? We can see the dotted lines around it. Click in the white space so it's not selected. Go to your paint bucket, pick a color, it doesn't matter what color, and here's the grow or shrink by. This is how much bigger the offset's gonna be. <clears throat> I like to do 20, so I'll show you what 20 looks like. So type in 20, and then let's click on the purple, okay? Because we only need the offset on the outside, right? I don't care about the inside. We can fix all that in design space. And that's what I mean about how much I know in Inkscape. I know just enough to create the offset. Everything else, because I feel like I'm so much more comfortable in design space, I can fix everything else in design space. All right, so let's get this candy cane, this popsicle or lollipop, candy and candy. Okay, click the arrow. Click in the white space, because right now this is selected, okay? So click in the white space, nothing is selected. Paint bucket, pick a different color, and let's offset it by 40 this time. So again on the blue. Okay, did you see how originally this one offset it by itself, but these two connected? Or I can't remember, these two connected. The off, they were so close together that by the time we offset, they kind of overlap a little bit. It's okay, click on the arrow, grab everything, okay? Then go to Path, Object to Path, File, Save As, and I'm gonna save it as Candy Offset. <laughs> okay, let's go into Design Space so we can see what it looks like. Let's go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, and Candy Offset, double click on it. We're good there, save. All right, so let's click on it and insert our image. And I'm going to get rid of our Isabella for a second, okay? We don't need that. That was just there to show you kind of what we were doing. Um, okay, so let's move this over into the center so you can see it. Okay, so you can see from the pink what happened is the lollipop and one of the candies, they um, they were so close together that that offset is connected. So just know that. Um, same thing as the candy cane and one of the bonbons or whatever. The cupcake is by itself. The blue layers are all separated and then the purple layer is what we basically got from, or everything else is what we got from Creative Fabrica. So let's click on this and ungroup everything. Okay, let's start moving things out of the way so we can see what we have. So these two ended up being together. If you didn't want that, we needed to do it in, design, in Inkscape and separate them further, okay? Um, but this is a good contrast because you, we have two that are coupled together and then one single. So this one, let's just look at this one. It has these little open marks right there. I would go to contour and hide all. So now I have this. Now this blue layer, I'm gonna move this over. And again, you can contour out those little things. You can do it by clicking hide all. And then if we move this to the front, arrange, send to the front, you can see what the offset looks like. So there's our offset. And then let's move this out of the way for now. Let's ungroup it down here. And then let's grab this. Well, it didn't let me do it. What's going on here? We'll look at that later. Okay, here's our bonbon. And again, we can get rid of some of these. So let's go to contour. Let's say you like, let's click here whenever you use contour and the number is not 100%. If you click on the number, it takes it to 100%. So you have the image here as well as your right-hand side panel. Um, sometimes I use this, sometimes I use the panel. Let's say we only wanna get rid of the, the little marks on the inside. Then you see these two are the big ones and then you can just deselect these, okay? So now it looks like this. And arrange, send to the front. 
Now you see how the blues overlap? You could just weld them. That way it's one piece. Okay, like that. And then you layer your candy on top of that. Let's look at this cupcake. So this cupcake, go to contour. Let's hide all. So it's just a solid offset. Same thing with this blue layer. Contour, hide all. Oops, here we go. And we'll arrange them to the front. So you can see, and then what I like is, let's say we're doing a cake topper with these images, okay? Um, let's do this one really quickly first though. Let's go to, let's hide all just so that we get rid of everything. And then this layer we're going to, we'll grab these two and weld them as well. And then let's go to contour and get rid of those small ones. I don't like, actually I'm just gonna click hide all. Okay, so it goes up here, right? Now, I like to just get an offset in, in Inkscape and then bring it in here and rearrange them. So for instance, let's group, let's group these together so that they move together, as well as this one and this one. So I don't like to um, create a one offset in Inkscape. So I like to bring it into design space here and let's say I want this on this side, I like this cupcake, but I want the cupcake to be the center of attention so I make it really big and I want it facing this way and then I want these two in, but I want it inverted. So I'm gonna go to flip and I'm gonna flip it horizontally because I want the pops, or the, lo whoa, the lollipop to be on the outside and I want it something like this. Then actually I want something like this and then I'm gonna put like the number four right here or something like that. So I'm just gonna put it in really quickly so you can see it. And normally I would create an offset for the number four as well, but let's just pretend, okay. Here we go. And let's say I want the number four here. So what I would do is I would take, now that I like where everything is, I would take my back layer and I would hit the shift key and grab all of my back and the number four, as, pretend the number four is an offset. I'm going to duplicate it because this is gonna be my background, okay? And I'm gonna weld it. That way I have a solid background in the, in the back. <laughs> Then I will still have my double layers that will sit on top. Oops. And this just gives me a really sturdy foundation. I'm gonna arrange them to the front for my stick to be on my cake topper, to be a cake topper and to not be flimsy. So see, I have my offset. I have one piece in the back that holds everything together. All of these are layered on top, which I think they're still grouped together. Let me see. Yeah, some of these are grouped by colors. I don't know. Let me see if I can move this. Yeah, I can't move that. Oh, because the purple layer is, okay. Let me get to the purple layer and ungroup. Okay. So the layers are all there, but let me see. Oh, and I lost some of those, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna group this for now. But you see, then you can layer your cupcake on top. And because it was an offset, you can now resize it and it will fit in there with a nice offset. Okay, so that's how I would go about creating the offset, creating a really sturdy cake topper because in the back of this is my gigantic cake topper, right? The one piece. Let me arrange send to the front. You have this piece. Behind this piece is gonna be your dowel that goes into, you know, the little stick that goes into the cake. And this is gonna hold everything together. 
All these layers will sit on top, will give you that nice offset, all the colors, all the mix of the papers and everything else, but this is gonna make it sturdy for you. And because it's all the way in the back with the four, I might even, with these little spaces, go to contour and hide all. And I'll bring this to the back so you can see it. So I'm gonna move it to the back, I'm gonna send it to the back and I don't know, let's say I made this color Did I not send it to the back? Arrange, send to the back. So you can see it has a little purple poking through, but it makes it really, really steady and sturdy. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, I will see you next time. Just post your comments and questions and your special request, um, post them. And then if you have a special request, send me the extra details to my email at Ann, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right. Thanks, guys.